Worn by Naomi Uemura between 1974 to 1976, when he completed a 12,500 km solo dog sled run from Greenland to Alaska, and it's speculated also perhaps on his 1978 North Pole expedition. Worn by Canadian astronaut Dr. David Williams after receiving it on his 21st birthday, and he wore it in space on the 1998 mission STS-90 and underwater in the Aquarius undersea research habitat. Worn in the movies by Richard Harris in Wild Geese, Keith Sutherland in Soldier's Sweetheart, Ben Gazzara in High Velocity, and of course, Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. All of these folks were of course wearing the Seiko 6105-8110, or its US version, the 6105-8119. In this video, we will overview the origins of the watch and its popularity, and I'll show you my own as an example and run through its main features. In Seiko Diverland, first there was the 6217 Seiko-matic self-data, or 62 mass, in 1965. The Japanese Antarctic Research Expedition's watch of choice and Seiko's first diver watch of 150 meters water resistance. Then we had some 300 meter water resistant watches, the 6215010 and the 6159011. Even these weren't up to the needs of saturation divers going deeper than 300 meters, which Seiko would be notified of through a letter from a professional diver from Hiroshima, which would result in the appointment of Ikuo Tokunaga to drive more professional watches, which would drive later development of the 600 meters Seiko 6159022 titanium grandfather tuner. But whilst they were figuring that out, the 150 meters waterproof, later relabeled water resistant as the compliance types were getting in there already, 6105 range would come out in 1968. First with the more standard, somewhat more symmetrical 6105-8000, but in the 1970-ish range we would see the much cooler arrival of the 6105-8110. Both were marked as Suwa as opposed to Daini, which were the two semi-competing divisions of Seiko. Of course, in keeping with the Seiko fandom's need to translate these heartless numbers, into popular culture, it's known as the Captain Willard, which were adorning Martin Sheen's wrist in the film Apocalypse Now, which is commensurate with the reported wide uptake of these watches by soldiers or marines who acquired them from the postal exchanges or PXs at around $75, and these were the shops that were available on military bases during the Vietnam War, so the choice was apt. Seiko's preference has been to emphasize more the real life link with Naomi Uemura, as can be seen with a relatively recent limited edition in his honor of his 80th anniversary in this cool blue colour. The watch was the beginning of Seiko's cushioned case look, which looks a little bit like a fried egg I think, which set the design language for the 6309 turtle, with the crown guards or shoulders protecting the crown positioned at 4 o'clock, which weirdly doesn't wind the watch but is a so-called turn and lock mechanism. Note the lock and the arrow text on the ridge crown which does not screw down. Essentially there's a pin in the case which one of the grooves from the crown locks into when you push it in. A quick Seiko shuffle, or Seiko samba if you're Russell from the Mad Watch Collector, is all that's needed to get the 6105B hacking quick date set 17 dual movement going, which is relatively effective due to the use of the Seiko magic lever system. And then this will merrily tick away at 21,600 beats per hour. The 60 click bi-directional bezel, that is it moves both clockwise and counterclockwise, has a click ball, but mine isn't necessarily the most clicky, and it's a coin edge style. In line with most 6105 8110s, mine has had a decent battering as it was worn by my dad who took it diving in his youth after acquiring it in 1975 I believe, and passing it on to me only recently after being a appallingly abandoned to the drawer, and it was on the worst Fixoflex bracelet I've ever seen. After an excellent service by Rexworthy Watches in the UK, who thankfully had a new old stock Type 3 Hardlex crystal and sorted the crown, as well as the more general service, my watch is in decent condition, bar the hands sporting the notorious black funk on the baton hour and minute hands. The second hand is funny and it's got this kind of red colour lower circle, and I've seen this described as a stoplight style. The chunky, boxy markers with larger ones at 6 and 9, and the beast marker at 12, super legible and a classic dial design with the board date window at 3 o'clock. As you have to do, I quickly secured an Uncle Seiko waffle strap to get the Martin Sheen look, and then subsequently got their H-Link steel bracelet, which you can see here. I believe the tire tread strap is the other classic look. The lug width is a weird one at 19mm, so you'll have slightly less choice than normal if you purchase this one. Despite having a crazy thin wrist at 6.25 inches, and this on paper being a beast of 44 millimeters with 48 millimeters lug to lug and 13 millimeters thickness even i can just about pull this one off so 
don't be put off if you're similarly slimly endowed in the wrist department. Of course, you can now get a brand new reissue of this watch with the SPB151, including in green with the SPB153, which I think is an awesome thing that Seiko have done here. It is a bit risky to go for these vintage ones as a lot of them are very beat up and there's only a small number of amazing folks who service these vintage ones properly now and they have long queues. Moreover, the new ones have drilled lugs which makes changing between your waffle strap and steel bracelet a lot easier without scratching up your watch. And that's it for today's video. I hope I got you hyped about the fantastic Seiko 6158110 and you can see why people love it so much. I'm getting very close to the magic 1k subscribers so if you enjoyed the video it would be super appreciated if you could subscribe. It would make my day and I hope you have a great rest of your day.